This is the Dubai 2014 master plan. And central to this plan are these famous, artificially built deserted islands, which have become symbols of financial failure and sat as empty reminders of the economic crisis which hammered Dubai during the global recession. Instead of the hotels and luxury properties which were planned to exist in these spots, it's just miles of empty sand that may sink into the ocean unless maintained. And yet, despite the failure of these projects, Dubai is still expanding more and looking to revive them as well. But why is this? Well, first it helps to look at why the islands were built in the first place. And while it may seem crazy for Dubai to keep expanding them, it makes sense when we consider how the UAE established themselves as a famous country to begin with. The Emirati states initially made their money from extracting oil. But since the late 1990s and early 2000s, the region has made a big effort to launch itself as a major tourism and financial hub to eliminate the country's reliance on oil, catering to wealthy investors and foreign visitors from around the world, while acting as an important travel stop between East and West. As a result, Dubai's downtown almost resembles a permanent construction zone with new and ambitious building projects going up all the time. But marketing yourself as a stylish destination can have its problems, especially when we consider the natural geography around Dubai. If we look here, the city is surrounded entirely by uninhabitable desert on one side and the ocean on the other. And by the time the Emirati property market was booming and Dubai was developing into a global hotspot, much of the city's limited coastline was already built up and the region was forced to come up with creative ideas to meet the demands of rapid expansion. So in 2001, a plan for a number of artificial islands off the Dubai coast was conceived by the real estate company Nakheel Properties. These projects were called the World Islands and Palm Islands, with each island designed to resemble countries around the world. The Palm Diera, the Palm Jebel Ali, and the Palm Jumeirah. Each island had been created through the process of land reclamation, which is dredging up the seabed and filling the space with layers of sand taken from Dubai's coast to form a solid foundation. Land reclamation has already been used to solve space issues in densely populated locations like Hong Kong and the Netherlands. But in terms of their looks and intended function, Dubai's artificial palm islands are something else. And they exist as almost separate communities out on the open sea and are targeted towards wealthy customers. The islands offered what the Emirati government and private investors hoped would be an innovative solution to the lack of available space in the city. And each island was expected to contain rows of luxury housing, hotels, restaurants and shopping malls for the world's elite. The Palm Jumeirah was successfully opened to buyers in 2006, now hosting up to 10,000 residents and is connected to the mainland by a monorail. But while the Palm Jumeirah is something of an engineering miracle and features heavily in the ads showing Dubai as the glamorous place to be, it's been quite a different story for the other islands. In fact, all of the other projects stalled after the Jumeirah's completion, remaining as mostly uninhabited sandy areas that the tourism commercials would rather you didn't see. The Palm Jumeirah's success lies in the fact that it was able to take advantage of a close proximity to the Dubai shoreline, and the people living there can connect directly to the amenities on the mainland without having to take a boat. But perhaps most crucially, its real estate and business plots went up for sale just before the world financial crisis in 2008. The other islands were built later and further out into the water. The idea was to use the Palm Jumeirah as a successful template to make bigger, more impressive islands. But the planned luxury housing and tourist spots weren't completed in time before Dubai's housing market was impacted by the financial crash from 2007 to 2010. The crash almost bankrupted the real estate industry in the city, causing massive debt problems for the Emirati government. A major consequence of the crash was that the prices of the properties on unfinished islands like the Palm Jebel Ali fell dramatically. The planners behind the project ended up compensating those who had invested in the islands, while the rest of the properties went unsold. Further controversies related to financial fraud and even a case of suicide with other investors didn't exactly help the island's public image either. Not to mention that it's been long known that the UAE had significantly restricted internet freedom. They're not also making the news for cybersecurity incidents consistently increasing. With 66% of UAE organizations reporting data breaches in the past year, with 87% of companies in UAE having faced different forms of cyber incidents in the past two years, with that of course including data breaches. This of course is terrible, because it means you not only have to worry about companies that are constantly collecting and selling your data to people with malicious intent, but also it falling into the hands of cyber criminals too. That's where the sponsor of this video comes in, Incogni. Now, none of this stuff is just limited to Dubai. On a global scale, the likelihood of your own data getting breached is constantly increasing as well. This can expose you to a wide range of dangers, from spam mail, or should I say scam mail that we all hate, to identity theft, online harassment, and even stalking. 
but the good news is that you have the right to protect your privacy and request that these data brokers delete the information they hold about you. The bad news is that it would take you years to do it manually, just once. And you'd need to repeat the process every few months as data brokers continue collecting your data and creating new records. That's where Incogni comes in. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removal, and deals with any objections from their side, all by themselves. All you need to do is create an account, grant them the right to work with you, and then just kick back and watch them get to work. Whenever a new record pops up on a data broker site, Incogni will automatically take care of it. The whole process is simply automated. So if you want to get on Incogni at a discount, simply go to incogni.com forward slash versed to get 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Link in the description down below too. So now for over 14 years, only one property existed on the world island. And this was just a show home to demonstrate properties to buyers that didn't even exist yet. Housing market problems haven't been the only issue facing these islands either. In fact, some ecological experts have raised concerns that the islands are potentially sinking into the water at a rate of 5 mm a year too. The islands have been created with large crescent-shaped barriers around the smaller islands in the middle to shield them from the open ocean. And while this works as a safety feature, some have pointed out that you can't just build a solid structure in the ocean without consequences. And they've argued the island's barriers create the risk for water stagnation and threats to wildlife if the natural current of the sea is blocked. The designers of the island were eventually forced to create new gaps on either side of the barriers to allow fresh water to flow in and prevent any natural damage. While the Palm Jumeirah was able to address these issues thanks to being inhabited, there were further concerns that the unsold islands would gradually erode and fall into the sea if no one was living there to take care of them. All in all, the unfinished islands created as many financial and environmental questions as they have solved. And yet despite this, Dubai is once again pushing ahead with these projects. Nakheel has insisted that the empty islands have not been cancelled, but are in fact long-term projects that were interrupted by the pandemic, and are now set for a completion date sometime in 2040. This, and really everything new coming to Dubai, is under the plan of the Dubai 2040 Urban Master Plan which aims to consolidate the Emirates' position as a preferred global destination for residents, visitors and investors. Core to this plan is a new plan for the Palm Jebel Ali, which has sat dormant since 2009 when it was initially completed. In 2023, it was announced that Nikhil secured a $4.6 billion loan from local investors to basically revive the island, in which it will expand to twice the size of the Palm Jumeirah and extend Dubai's coastline by approximately 68 miles offering luxury beachside living to around 35,000 families through over 80 new hotels and countless luxurious mansions. A third of this will all be powered by renewable energy as well. After sitting as empty for 14 years, it was announced that the World Archipelago Islands would host buzzing new resort towns on each country, with the Sweden island being used to construct an ocean resort modeled on similar projects found in the Maldives, and new housing would be added for the employees to live on the island. And plans haven't stopped there, as a new Monaco-themed hotel on the World Archipelago opened its doors to guests back in 2022. So what's changed? Well, Dubai has been hit by two major problems in the last decade. First, its property market bubble bursting during the 08 recession, followed by the pandemic. The region knew it had to make up for lost investment and business opportunities, so that the Emirati government could first pay off debts and then revive the local economy. And to achieve this, Nikhil took a more assertive marketing strategy in promoting luxury properties in Dubai. It also helps that as a part of the financial rescue plans following the recession, Nikhil was also bought by Dubai's government in 2011 and made into a state-run company. So the question of how to solve living and building space became as much of a political issue as well as a business one, as Dubai strives to market itself to the world again. It's safe to say things are going to plan though, as the real estate market and tourist industry in the Emirates has experienced a bounce back since the pandemic restrictions were ended. And according to some experts in the property sector, Dubai's housing market was closing in on London and New York City in 2023. That same year, Dubai also counted a record number of foreign visitors coming into the country, totaling around 17.15 million tourists, making it a record-breaking year. Within the returning waves of foreign nationals, Dubai has found a new source of real estate buyers since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Economic sanctions against Russia have effectively blocked wealthy Russian citizens from purchasing and investing in property in the West. So already a number of Russian buyers have bought homes on the Palm Jumeirah and Dubai wants to capitalize on these investments by adding new space on the unfinished islands. Since 2024, Dubai has seen record numbers in people investing in property, a statistic which has built up over the past couple of years. 
with Nikhil even claiming that it had sold an incredible $844 million worth of new property in just one day, and said buyers were forming large lines outside their office to purchase the new homes appearing in the city. This sudden upsurge in demand for property is certainly a turnaround after Dubai has struggled, and the city will have to work to keep up with this increased demand. Property experts have even predicted that Dubai's housing market shows no sign of slowing down, with it being forecast to rise by 5 to 7 percent this year. The city's international reputation as a tax haven has played a role in fueling this demand, but a lack of housing inventory could be the one barrier that stops any strong growth. So, to stay on top of the race, it makes sense for the Emirati government to keep expanding the empty islands and resume work to make them habitable. Even though the Palm Island projects didn't get off to a good start, and the journey towards what now appears to be a completion date has been a difficult one, it looks like they've provided an answer to Dubai's ongoing question of how to expand a city surrounded by inhospitable terrain. Time will tell what the environmental impacts of the island may be, but they have at least solved some of the issues facing the city. Thank you for watching. And again, thank you to Incogni for sponsoring this video. I'll see you in the next one.